It's great seeing you in a different role uh, today on Morning Live. And uh, yeah, we've got a special broadcast and uh, we'll be chatting issues, home affairs. And that affects every single South African in one way or another. From the moment you get born, I think from next year onwards, uh, your parents are going to have to register you within 30 days. So the idea of late uh, registrations of birth is going to uh, disappear in the future. I think there used to be loopholes that people abused in the past. But to tell us a little bit about a lot of the uh, amendments in the immigration uh, uh, regulations is the uh, spokesperson of the head of communications, Michael Metuete, who joins us now ahead of the conversation that we're going to be having with the minister himself just after seven. Michael, it was a pleasure to have a chat with you. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. Good morning and thank you for having me. All right, so on the 26th of uh, May, you announced uh, all these uh, changes of uh, uh, regulations that are going to come into play. And the question is, uh, some of them are causing a stir, some of them are pretty straightforward. But perhaps just by way of background, why the need for the changes in the regulations? What, what brought it on? Well, I think, well, first it's important for me to note that um, the regulations had been a process that had been going on for about a year. So even um, uh, preceding um, last year, May, there had been discussions about them and there had been regulations that had been put on cassette and um, the minister then, Minister Pando, had been having a number of consultations with different stakeholders about them. In May, the minister, after cabinet had approved them, the minister uh, announced them. The, 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 the rationale behind them was that there was a, a great deal of abuse of the regulations. Uh, it got to a point where we couldn't enforce the law anymore, and um, it, it was it was it was it was very uh, lapsed and a very laxed approach by Home Affairs to have regulations like that that they they couldn't enforce, and it presented a number of security risks for the country. And if something happens in those situations, Home Affairs and other security cluster ministries would get into quite a great deal of trouble for. So we had to make sure that our regulations at least try uh, match our Immigration Act and also match our obligations to protect children and minors in the, in the country. So essentially you were closing some of the loopholes that had uh, been started to be abused by people. All right, let's go through a few of them. I mean, they, they, they're right across the, the board, I guess, but um, one of the ones that uh, certainly is causing uh, a bit of drama is the unabridged birth certificates. So parents who, or people who want to travel must produce unabridged birth certificates for minor children. Just walk us through that. Well, as I said, um, the department, our government is a signatory to a number of, um, of, of um, international uh, conventions and obligations that we must try and live up to. One of them is the Children's Act that tries to protect minors. Uh, in the old system, it was quite easy for children to travel in and out of the country um, and it was quite easy for human trafficking to happen. We've seen it happen, even with um, Operation Fiella. One of the things that was uncovered was um, about 15 or, or 14 um, Somalian children who were under the age of 18 who were in the country and nobody could account for them. So the, the, this new regulation merely says that uh, if a child is coming into the country, if a child is going out of the country, they must have an unabridged birth certificate. Unabridged birth certificate is the details of the, the parents. Uh, it can be a single mother, but if, if, the parent is, if, if the child is registered with both parents, it has to be obviously both details. And if uh, a child is traveling out of the country and one of the parents is absent, then that parent must give um, approval for that child to travel. We have had a number of situations, I mean, apart from the ISIS one, the ISIS scare that we had, we've had a number of situations where children leave the country and parents come to home affairs and say, why did you allow my child to leave without my permission? And uh, we've got a number of court cases where people are struggling to get their children back into the country. So what we ask for, like many other countries do, is an unabridged birth certificate. And when, a, when a, one of the parents is not present, we ask for permission from that parent. All right, so you've mentioned uh, international norms. So how comparable is this legislation? I mean, uh, are a number of other countries doing exactly the same thing? Yes, I mean, you know, if you travel to, the, to uh, most of Europe, they'll ask for exactly the same thing. A lot of people are coming to Home Affairs and asking for their unabridged birth certificate. Um, we get people that are not minors above the age of 18 that are coming to Home Affairs asking for their unabridged birth certificates because they're traveling to Germany. 
This is not a regulation of ours that's making Germany ask you for an unabridged birth certificate. It's a German regulation. Uh, if you travel into the U.S., they, they ask for similar documents that have, um, you know, your family tree. So it's it's not it's not something unique to South Africa. It's not something South Africa has thumb sucked and created for itself. Uh, it's uh, it's international norm, and some of the criticism at times can be a bit unfair. We understand the inconvenience of it, but some of the criticism can be unfair in that we. We're okay for the, uh, Europe asking for this, this, this documentation for the protection of their country and for a number of other reasons. But when South Africa asks of this, it's, um, it's, it's not allowed. South Africa should be a backyard or, 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 or a place that's easy entrance for everybody. We understand the tourist, um, the tourist concern. We also have those concerns. But as home affairs, we don't only have tourism concerns. We have tourism concerns, okay. safety concerns too. Right. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to leave it there, unfortunately, but we'll unpack a lot of this a little bit later on. But, but give, thank you for giving us a little bit of a foretaste. Okay, so that's the head of communications, uh, Mike Loma, uh, Twitter, talking to us about uh, some of the changes in the immigration rules, but uh, a full unpacking of that after seven. Let's find out, though, from uh, CNC. What